In this video, we're going to look at the critical radius of insulation for a pipe. We'll start by defining the problem, which is that of an insulated pipe. We'll go through solving that problem and looking at what happens as we increase the thickness of the insulation, and then we'll define the critical radius for insulation. The problem is that of a pipe, which will be carrying a fluid which is at a different temperature than the ambient conditions, which will be subject to a convection coefficient and an ambient temperature. We're going to assume that the pipe is highly conductive compared to the insulation material that we would put on it, such that there will be very little temperature drop throughout that, uh, the pipe material, and hence from our resistance network, where here we have shown a res conduction resistance through the pipe, a conduction resistance through the insulation, and then a convection resistance to the ambient, we're going to assume uh, additionally, amongst all the other things that are required in order uh, to make this resistance network, we're going to assume uh, that the conduction in the pipe wall is negligible. And so doing, we'll get rid of the first resistance. We'll go direct directly from the temperature inside the pipe through our resistance through the insulation and our convection resistance out to the ambient conditions. Our conduction resistance is, of course, this is a cylindrical system. The radius is increasing in this direction. The radius is increasing as we go through the insulation. And so our conduction resistance is the ln of the outer radius over the inner radius over 2 pi L conductivity of the insulation material. And our convection resistance, 1 over HA, where the area is, of course, based on the outer radius, R3. And, of course, our total heat loss from that system is going to be the temperature difference between the pipe and the ambient over the sum of these two resistors. Let's look at an example problem. I'm going to choose that the fluid inside the pipe is warmer. We'll say it's at 100 degrees Celsius or 393 uh, Kelvin. And we'll say outside is at 0 degrees centigrade or 273 Kelvin. I'm going to make a really small pipe. We'll say it's a one millimeter tube. Since we've neglected uh, the, the conduction through the pipe itself, this is actually my R2 here, and this will be my final R3. So we're going to look at, uh, at starting with the outer radius of the pipe of R2. That will be when there's no insulation, and we're going to gradually increase this thickness. So we're going to increase the outer radius R3 from, zero, uh, from 0 0.001, our pipe radius, out to our final value here. I'm going to pick a conductivity for the insulation of 0.05 watts per meter Kelvin, a, a decent insulation. If you're going to put insulation, it should have a very low conductivity. And we'll use a relatively low convection coefficient, perhaps it's natural convection on a calm day. And I'll use a length of the pipe into the screen. Again, my length is in this dimension of one meter, such that our net results will really be the heat loss per unit length of that pipe system that we have, uh, that we're using. Okay, so I'm going to start with no insulation at all. So I note here that there's no insulation. I evaluate my resistances. There's, there's only R3 in this case because there's no insulation, so we only have the convection resistance, and our total resistance is given by this equation. So our <coughs> I'm also going to evaluate the thickness of the insulation. That's the difference between R3 and R2. And that, of course, is zero when there's no insulation. So you'll notice that the heat rate is written here, 3.77 watts per meter. Great, so I have this high temperature fluid in the pipe. Uh, it's cold outside. I think I should insulate it and save myself some money. So let's start by adding a small bit of insulation and see what happens. So now we've added the insulation. We have to add the conduction resistance through the insulation and then the convection resistance. And here's a picture of my pipe. The white part is the, is the pipe itself, and this, uh, the size of this black ring is representing that current thickness of insulation. So the thickness of insulation is the pipe radius smaller than my total uh, R3 for this system. But notice what's happened. My heat rate has gone up from sub 4 uh, up to 6.62 watts per meter. That's troubling. We've added insulation, and the situation has gotten worse. We're losing more heat. Well, let's just add more insulation and see what happens. So we'll add another chunk of insulation. The insulation is getting thicker. Of course, the conduction resistance is going up because of that, and we're losing even more heat. Now we're up to 8.51 watts per meter of piping system. Okay, let's add another 0.1 centimeters, another millimeter of insulation. And it continues to increase. Now it's 9.7 watts per meter. Another millimeter of insulation. And we're up to over 10 watts per meter, almost 10 and a half. 
continue adding insulation in chunks of one millimeter and we see that it's the total heat rate is increasing but that rate is starting to slow down now we're up to 0.6 centimeters of insulation over 11 watts per meter 0.7 centimeters 11.3 0.8, 11.4, and now we're at 0.9 centimeters of insulation, or one centimeter outer radius for my entire system. And I have a value of 11.42. I've made that red because this actually, you can see that the, this, the rate of increase of the heat loss is decreasing, and this is actually the minimum value, as we'll see in a moment. So as I increase it, now I've dropped down to 11.4, now we have a full centimeter of insulation and as I go to 1.1 centimeters my heat rate is decreasing still and as I go all the way out to the five centimeters that I wanted to add in the end it decreases continuously but it never gets anywhere close to that initial value when I had no insulation at all let's explore what's going on in this problem first let's look at the conduction resistance the conduction resistance of course, increases as we increase the thickness of the insulation. Conduction resistance is given here, of course, and as R3 gets bigger, or the thickness of the insulation gets bigger, this resistance value gets larger and larger, as we expect it to do. And with a larger resistance, we would expect a smaller uh, heat loss through that pipe. That's why we add the insulation. But that's only one of the two resistances. That's the conduction resistance through here. What happens to the convection resistance as we increase the outer radius R3? As we increase the outer radius R3, the convection process is based on this outer area. This outer area is increasing. The circumference of the pipe, 2 pi R3 times the length of the pipe, is that outer area. And of course, as we increase that outer radius, this, con this area is increasing. And that means that our convection resistance is decreasing initially and eventually it becomes very, very small, such that it becomes negligible compared to the values of the conduction resistance. Notice that this is a, a, approaching zero. As the area is getting very large, this resistance is approaching zero, whereas our conduction resistance was increasing and is getting larger and larger as we go to larger radiuses. When we combine R2 and R3 for the total resistance, of course, we see that because of that in the, at the smaller radii, that increase in convection radius is the convection area is dominating and our total resistance is decreasing but we hit an optimum point where that convection resistance gets is becoming negligibly sm small and the increasing conduction resistance begins to dominate and we start to see uh, an increase in that resistance or a decrease in the heat transfer but for this particular system again that resistance is nowhere near the value it was when we had no insulation at all in this particular system, it does not make sense to add insulation as we're going to make our heat rate worse. So let's look at this and define the critical radius. The total resistance is given by that conduction resistance plus that convection resistance, where R here is my outer radius, the radius at any given outer radius. And if I want to find a maximum point or an extreme point, in this case, it's a minimum, uh, I should take the derivative of my resistance taking that derivative here. And if I want to find that extreme point, I'm going to set that derivative equal to zero. And if I set this derivative equal to zero, I can solve for what uh, the radius is. And solving that, I find that the minimum radius is equal to the conductivity of the insulation over the convection coefficient that the system is exposed to. And that, of course, being the solution for when the derivative is equal to zero, is my critical radius. What does that mean? We've seen it in this example. If my radius is smaller than the critical radius, I'm going to be decreasing the resistance and increasing the heat transfer from my system. I have to ensure that my system is actually, at a, my outer radius is larger than this critical radius, or it makes no sense at all to add insulation to the pipe. In our particular example, our conductivity was 0 0.05 uh, watts per meter Kelvin, and our convection coefficient was 5 watts per meter squared Kelvin, and so K over H is equal to 1 centimeter. And we can see plotted on here that this is exactly where we go through this minimum when our outer radius is 1 centimeter or our thickness of insulation was 0.9 centimeters.
Let's explore what this means for practical values. Of course, we use a very, very small pipe here. My outer radius of my pipe uh, was a millimeter, it was extremely small. And so let's make a plot of, in this case, a contour plot of the convection coefficient that we use versus the conductivity. And I've restricted the conductivity to relatively low values because if we're going to put on insulation, it should have a low value. And the color represents the critical radius. Of course, there's such a wide range here uh, going from less than 10 to the minus 4 all the way to 10 to the 1. So from 0.1 millimeters uh, all the way uh, to 0.1 meters it's hard to see these variations. Now, so I plotted a couple here. If we have a very low convection coefficient uh, and a very low conductivity, a very good insulation, then we see a critical radius of about one centimeter. Even one centimeter is fairly small, but if your pipe is uh, bigger than one centimeter, then it should well be insulated. So in most pipes, you're going to think that insulation in practical sense is going to be reasonable to do, but you should check this radius. As we go up to a higher and higher convection coefficient, that critical radius is getting smaller and smaller. And so with, with any significant convection coefficient, this is now 0.3 millimeters. Any of our pipes are going to be bigger than this, and it's going to make sense to insulate them. And we've neglected radiation in this problem. If we included radiation, we could think of it in a simple sense as adding the convection coefficient for radiation, or the heat transfer coefficient to radiation, to the actual convection coefficient, and this coefficient is going to get larger, and the critical radius is going to get smaller and smaller. So if we have a good insulation with a low thermal conductivity and any kind of significant convection, this critical radius is going to be extremely small. We can look at that in more detail by plotting a couple of curves so that we see uh, the values more readily. So here I plotted three low values of convection coefficient, 5, 10, and 50. Uh, as a, and plotted the thermal conductivity, again low for insulation, so we're probably working down in this region down here. And now we've got the critical radius plotted here uh, in units of meters. And so you can see again in this view that our critical radiuses are going to be fairly small. This, is, this line is two centimeters right here uh, for virtually any good insulation with a reasonable convection coefficient.